It's o'clock. just Groundhog Day. It's the same stocks getting hit every single day, and it's the growth names. I mean, they're oversold. They've been oversold. We've had a couple little bounces, but they continue to be oversold, but they're oversold for good reason. A lot of these growth names were trading at ridiculous valuations. And you know what? This is the market that is reconnecting with reality. And the similarities back to March of 2000 when the tech bubble burst are so, there's so many similarities. What happened was, and everybody thinks, oh yeah, we just crashed. That didn't happen. It took over a year and a half for the NASDAQ to fall the 81% that it did. It was a slow cascade. We called it death by a thousand cuts. Every day you'd come in and loosen technologies would be down another 3%, the most widely owned stock back then. You know, every day you'd come in and your growth names would be down a little bit more, a little bit more. And you're like, okay, they're going to come back. They're going to bounce back. And also what happened early in that, which people don't realize, is that they flocked out of the high PE stuff, out of the growth names, and they flocked into the value names. They flocked into safety trade. We're going to move safe. And then what happened a couple months later? Everything rolled over. And that was because you had the growth names that just could not catch a bit. Stocks that were trading at 70 or 80 times earnings couldn't catch a bit. So then what you have is portfolio managers coming in and starting selling good stuff to raise money for their bad holdings. So, I mean, this could just be getting started, this party in the growth names. It could also be 1998. And maybe we're going to, you know, bounce back here. Maybe this is just another dip. But it's been significant enough and long enough now in some of this PE stuff like Zoom that you start thinking, I, I think, you know, that it's coming to roost. You know, Tesla, same story. I mean, you look at the company. Yeah, the story was awesome. We've been trading on story for a year and not caring anything about fundamentals. But at this point in time, we are starting to care about valuation. In the last two months, you can definitely see the rotation. We're starting to care about valuation and fundamentals. So this market is reconnecting with valuation. And you know what? Valuation matters to this market all of a sudden. And you know what? There's a lot of stocks still trading at ridiculous valuations. If you're in a stock that's trading 50 times sales, if you're in your door dashes and saying, well, the stock is tre- cheap, it was $200, now it's 129 I mean, is it cheap? Do your homework on your stocks. Crunch your numbers because your CFA hat didn't matter three months ago. It sure as hell matters now. So, yeah, people are going to say, well, what about GameStop? There's always going to be outliers, but, you know, GameStop will eventually come to roost, too. So I think this is the market where you actually do some fundamental research and you buy companies that are at reasonable prices. Like, look what I've been buying. Lockheed Martin. That was a great call. Everybody laughs, you know, and say Lockheed Martin. Who the hell wants to own Lockheed Martin when I was buying it at 325 and or 330? I paid 330. But when I was buying that, I took heat. It went all the way down to 320. I didn't get the bottom, but I was like, you know what? Reasonable valuation, dividend, space. You know, Kathy's, you know, we talked about Kathy's. This will be a, a segue into Kathy's ETF on before space, you do that. Before yesterday. you do that, before yeah. you do that, yeah, you, you brought up a term and in in two terms here. And if I don't know if you're day trading, you're swing trading, or long term investing, but if you're looking at a, a chart on something and you're saying it's oversold. Uh, it's got to bounce or it's overbought. Those are two of the probably most misused terms on Wall Street because something can stay overbought for a really long time and something can stay oversold. Yep. So look at, you got to have a hell of a lot better criteria than saying, oh, like uh, it's oversold. Like, yeah, you can jump in Viacom here. Uh, it's oversold. Well, you know what? There are people that bought this in It was March. oversold to 70. Yeah, and it went to 100. So just, yeah, you know, overbought. just maybe we should ban that term from the show. Overbought, oversold. It's so it's so nebulous. But go ahead. Let's go into uh, – I mean, I, I, I use it just because it's the timing of it. I'm waiting for that rip to sell. You know, I hate it, yeah. selling on dips. So I'm like when something's oversold, I'm looking for that rip to lighten up. And, you know, every time we go up, on the queues, every time we get that rip roar and rally, like Friday night, I'm selling more growth names. You know, I'm selling more names because I have the barbell approach too. I mean, my barbells always lean more value. So my portfolio obviously doing very well with a lot of value names in it right now. But I've got some of those smaller growth names too. I had a little bit of those. And, you know, I lightened those up for the last month, you know, what I've been talking about every day on the show. 
Um, so, you know, I'm not hurting as bad as some people, but don't kid yourself. I still have a couple of those growth names. I still kept a small piece of the Fisker. That's been garbage. I have a couple other EV plays. Those have all been garbage. Um, it, it's difficult to just come in here and say, okay, now is the time it's going to turn. And if you've been trying to time the turn, you're not doing well. <laughs>